Hey, good morning, everybody. It is Thursday, October the 29th. Uh, we are grinding down the last couple days of the month. I'm going to be in Daniel chapter 9, verses 20 to 23. I want to just say a couple of things first. Um, I continue to get a lot of emails, a lot of messenger uh, messages each day. Um, a lot of hate mail, a lot of angry people, a lot of people saying I should do this or I should do that, a lot of demands. And I just want to remind people, I don't answer every email that I get, every phone call that I get. I just don't have time to do that. Um, but here, here's, here's the deal. I'm a dreamer, and I have dreams, and I put them out there. And a lot of people want to make a lot of, a lot of details about them. A lot of people want to criticize, like once again, two friends who I send them to, two people that I trust, two people that I, that I know, I have in my heart, and I just want to, want to remind people that uh, comments that might be made practically on my, on my page or on the Brace Yourself page, um, we're, we're going to start blocking people, blocking this and that. Um, I've turned several of the messages uh, over law enforcement and will continue to do so. Um, I'm not for sure what it is. I think it's just the, the chaos of the moment, the time in which we live. But I appreciate your prayers. Uh, I've not heard from my sister yet on my brother-in-law. Hopefully we'll hear from them in a little bit. Uh, my daughter Hannah is having a few more issues, so continue to pray for her. Um, I believe, once again, that we're going to see a very, very contentious um, election. Uh, so we are just days away. Um, we're seeing all sorts of crazy, crazy things happening, especially in Philadelphia. Uh, markets are already very, very, uh, very, very loose this morning. Uh, I saw a price drop in silver and in gold yesterday just based on markets. I'm trying to figure out, you know, everybody's trying to figure out what's going to happen. And hopefully by this time next week we'll have an idea of who the president is. And uh, I'm, I'm hoping so, but nonetheless. Um, we're living in some very, very trying times. Some very, very trying times. And uh, hopefully we can see that uh, the Lord's going to work for us um, as long as we work for Him. And that, that's, that's the real deal, the real, the real situation. A lot of people want God to bless them, but they don't want to live the kind of life that God blesses. And even if we do live the kind of life that God blesses, he never said we would not have any issues or problems or, 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 or difficulties. Okay. Daniel chapter 9, verses uh, 20 through 23, it says this. While I was still speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my plea before the Lord my God in behalf of the holy mountain of my God, while I was still speaking in prayer, the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision previously, came to me in my extreme weariness about the time of the evening offering. And he instructed me and talked with me and said, Daniel, I have come now to give you insight with understanding. At the beginning of your pleas, the command was extra, and I have come to tell you because you are highly esteemed. So pay attention to the message and gain understanding of the vision. Look at how many ways he communicates with God. He says, first of all, while I was still speaking and praying. Then he says, confessing my sin and the sin of my people. And then he says this, presenting my plea before the Lord my God. And then he says, while I was still speaking in prayer. So there's, there's five or six different things that, that, that Daniel says there about the communication that he is having, the communication that he is having with the Father. 
So there was a lot of depth. He wasn't just pay, praying a basic prayer. There was depth here. And I, I encourage you to let your prayers be deep. Don't let them just be simple, surface, easy, happy-go-lucky prayers. God wants something more than just, God, here I am. Thank you for blessing me. But that's, he wants more than that. Daniel felt the prayer in the deepest part of the spirit of gripped him. I want to tell you some of the keys that Daniel had in his life. First of all, he had a sense of responsibility for himself and for his nation. He was confessing his sin and the sin of his people. And Daniel was one of the few people in, in the world we don't have a whole lot of pictures of anything he did that was wrong or sinful. And But yet he said he, he declared his sin. So... Uh, he had responsibility. He also had an acknowledgement of the sin of his nation. He carried the weight of what was going on in the nation personally. It was a recognition of the consequences of the sins of the nation, how they played out. He was there in Babylon as an exile because it, Israel had failed, had failed them. Do you have recognition of that? He was living out the consequences of somebody else's sin the other generation. He believed that God would answer him in some favorable way. He still prayed, Lord, I pray you get us out of here. I pray you do what's going on. And Daniel knew from the book of Jeremiah they'd be there for seven years. So when Daniel prayed this prayer that we just prayed through, he knew he would not see the conclusion. He would not see the goodness of God as far as letting them go. He knew he would be gone, but yet he still prayed for a generation ahead of him. And that matters. He believed that God would keep his word for judgment. This is another thing that matters. We know judgment's coming to America. We know judgment's coming to the church. We can't stop those things. I know folks that are saying, well, let's just pray it all goes away. We can pray some of it goes away, but not all. And Pastor Dana, you know, what, what God did, I know God can do those things. But I also have too many examples in Scripture where Israel failed and God allowed judgment to come. And he's not going to treat America differently than he did Israel. And Israel's his chosen, his people. He also believed that God, well, he also stood in the gap for his nation and for his people. And that's what we need to do. We need to stand in the gap for this nation. We need to stand in the gap for our communities. We need to stand in the gap for the church. But we need to stand in the gap. And that's what he did. So, you know, <coughs> Jesus promised some great things for those that endure in the end. I want to endure no matter when he comes back. And a lot of people that believe in the rapture, I, I, I keep having a lot of people ask me about my thoughts on the rapture. Here's my thoughts on the rapture. I'm going to assume as a God pastor, and, and that is one of our core beliefs. But I do believe this. If the only reason you want a rapture to come is to keep you from any difficulty, any hard times, any frustrating moments in your life, you're looking at the rapture entirely theologically wrong. Okay? I understand the catching one. I understand the two people looking and feel one taking one left. I understand that. But if, our only help, if we're just waiting for the Lord to take us so that we don't get touched by anything hard or difficult, I think we're about to see a lot of theology interrupted. And I do believe this. Everybody's theology about end times is going to find something wrong about it because we're all going to, you know, right now we see the glass darkly. We can see just a little bit, then face to face. And so... Most likely, every single one of us is going to have some, some issues with our theology when it comes to how the end times actually play out. And I have people sending me uh, notes and messages from every theological position that you can imagine every single day. And I love the conversation. I love the, 
I love the debate sometimes that happens in those conversations. I'm not here to prove a point. I'm just here to say, be ready when Jesus comes. Be ready for Jesus whenever he comes. It could be today, it could be tomorrow. And at this point, it doesn't matter when he comes. It just matters that we're ready. That we're ready. And I've had some people take great, great concern about that. Am I changing my doctrine? I'm not changing my doctrine. I just want to make sure that people are ready when Jesus comes comes whatever that might be so um we better just pray <laughs> this is the best thing to do for us today lord i want to thank you that daniel prayed like you prayed i want to thank you that he had his your heart in his prayers and lord i recognize that daniel was miss much is one of the people the part in the book in the words that we that we hear about that no gracious sin is, is listed or no grievous thing is listed. Thank you for his testimony. Thank you, Lord, that decades after he was taken as a young man, he still remembered what had been taught to him by his parents, by his fathers, by the priests. Lord, he remembered the word of God. He remembered the principles of the word. He remembered the laws and the statutes, the mandates. He remembered the history. And he brought those into his life, and he still lived it. <laughs> Lord, for, uh, oh, bless me, sorry. But God, I thank you that Daniel continued to pray like you prayed. All during the days of his exile there, Lord, even though his culture was changed, his name was changed, and the way he dressed was changed, the things he taught was changed, he kept hold of you. And may, may the church and the body of Jesus Christ in this day and age today, Lord, may we be ready to, to do everything we can to sit, serve you, live for you, keep our focus on you. God, let our prayers be established. Help us to confess our sins and the sins of the nation. Personal and corporate God, help us to stay on top of things that are happening and going on in the world. Lord, I, I'm thankful you sent the angel Gabriel to Daniel. And Lord, I've never, I've never seen an angel, I've never touched an angel, I've never had one appear in my room, I've never had you appear publicly before me, I've never heard your voice audibly. But God, I'm thankful there are men and women of God who did in the scriptures. I'm thankful, Lord, that you're the God who gives dreams and visions. I'm thankful, Lord, that you're the God that pours out the Holy Spirit. Lord, that you and all your sons and daughters to prophesy in this day and age. And God, I just pray an outpouring of your spirit upon the body of Christ. And we will see an absolute outpouring of the spirit of God in, in, in ways that we've never seen before. And we will see children, small kids, all the way up to the older men and all the way Lord, having dreams and visions and prophetic words that are coming and coming faithfully. Lord, I pray for an outpouring of the Spirit upon the church, the body of Christ, so that we see in our services a great outpouring of God's power, of God's hand. Lord, I pray we see more people baptized in the Spirit, more people baptized in water, more people saved, more people filled to the full, Lord, with all the things that they need from you. God, Daniel prayed this prayer because he wanted to see the nation released. And he knew that decades from where he was served, he was praying, when he would see those things, he would never see with his own eyes, but he knew another generation would. So, God, as we pray forward, up until the time of the tribulation, God, I'm praying forward. I'm asking you to move and allow the church to push forward. In, in, in greater ways, run with the power of the Holy Spirit so we can see people saved and changed and filled with the Holy Spirit and their lives changed by all the things that you can do. God, that's our heart today. That's our heart today. Help us have a sense of responsibility for ourselves and for our nation. Help us have an understanding and knowledge of the sins of this nation, God, and to cry out to you for forgiveness for it. Lord, help us to acknowledge the weight of the sin and what it's costing us. Lord, Philadelphia, Seattle, Minneapolis, Portland, so many other places that they're experiencing the fallout, the acknowledgement of the weight of the sin that's happened in their communities. 
and the leadership God has turned their back on you. Get open eyes. Help there to be a recognition of consequence. I, I pray God you wake root, looters and rioters back where they realize that they're looting and rioting in their own neighborhoods. God bring conviction, bring confusion to those people. But also bring a sense of understanding of what they're doing. And they're doing this in their own communities, and their own heritage, their own legacy. Lord, we do believe that you're going to answer us in a favorable way. And we do believe that you're going to keep the, keep your word for judgment. But God, help us to stand in the gap. Help us to stand in the gap this morning, and today, and tonight, and next week, and tomorrow. God, help us to stand in the gap every single day. And be a witness. And be your witness to the watching world. May this Lord be. May this Lord be. The day when you use us in incredible ways. To do incredible things. Lord, well, send us out to do exploits today. Send us out to do exploits. And send us out, Lord, in the fullness of the power of the Holy Spirit, full of the knowledge of your word and your love for the lost. Send us out, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, outside of the rioters and the looters, the worst thing I'm dealing with today, allergies. So I'm sure some of you will join me in that, uh, in that lament of the day. Once again, folks, appreciate you praying with me. And uh, I'll probably be in an airport tomorrow morning when I do my, my prayer focus. I should not have to uh, record it. Uh, based on my flight time. So, uh, most likely tomorrow, I'll see you from the, somewhere in the Nashville airport, about 7 a.m., and uh, looking forward to seeing what God's going to do with you, 